Think of a time where women do not receive the same opportunities in sports as men. Picture a high school graduating class of which most of its women will never enter the workforce. Imagine a country where only 3% of its scientists are female. Before the passing of Title IX in 1972, this was reality for women living in America. Title IX, a major turning point in 1972, made great strides in dismantling barriers in women's rights from high school sports to higher education. However, it created unintended consequences for men. Title IX caused a dramatic change in women's rights, and it was the 1960s in its events that set the stage for this law to pass. The 1960s was a time period engulfed in protest. Motives were as broad as civil rights to anti-war movements. Women's rights especially experienced major alterations during the 1960s. Previously, during World War II, women gained economic value by working in factories and defense plants. During this time period, feminist symbols such as Rosie the Riveter and Eleanor Roosevelt strengthened women's empowerment. After the horrors of World War II were over, women returned to their pre-war housewife roles, losing their influence in the working world. This retraction frustrated Betty Friedan, a freelance journalist who was not content with the limited opportunities granted to women in society. In 1963, she published The Feminine Mystique, which addressed this discrimination as the problem with no name, therefore sparking the women's revolution. The youth of America was greatly affected by the feminist movement. Women were beginning to receive a more equal treatment in the classroom setting, in turn opening up opportunities for them in the business world. Each day, more and more women began working out of the house. Equal education did not, however, grant them the benefits or respect which their male counterparts enjoyed every day. In fact, women who worked at the Ford Sewing Machine Company were paid 15% less than their male co-workers. Not only did women face discrimination in the workplace, but also in athletics. In 1967, Katherine Switzer became the first woman to run the Boston Marathon. In her second mile, she was attacked by a race official. When this official attacked me and, and cursed at me and, and tried to get me out of the race, and he did it in front of the press truck, I was really, really embarrassed. It was like I'd entered this really important event and I was so totally unwelcome. Not only were the 1960s a time of protest, but also a huge time in the world of sports. The New York Yankees hit a record of staggering 193 home runs during their season. In 1968, a black pitcher, Bob Gibson, set a world record by striking out 17 batters. While men set records, women began participating in athletics as well. In the early 1900s, the new woman began engaging in a modest tennis match or a casual bike ride. Gradually, people turned away from old research, such as Edward Clark's book, Sex and Education, which stated that it would be terrible for a woman's health to participate in sports, and more and more females were inclined to take part in sports, which were previously exclusive to men. This wish was ignored in school systems and was not accepted in society. Discrimination in school sports created a fertile environment for the making of this legislation. No person in the United States shall, on the basis of sex, be excluded from participation in, be denied the benefits of, or be subjected to discrimination under any education program or activity receiving federal financial assistance. Title IX, which was passed on June 23, 1972, was a law which aided incredibly in narrowing the gender gap between men and women in schools. Title IX exceeded expectations by going far beyond small educational affairs and having a national impact. Steps toward forming this law began in 1969 when Bernice Sandler, the godmother of Title IX, created statistics proving that previously employed females who were equally qualified were being replaced by men. In 1970, Bernice Sandler joined with Edith Green, a women's rights activist who she considered to be strong-willed. She was a nice person, uh, but not, not an easy person uh, in many ways, but she certainly introduced Title IX and that was important. Hawaii Senator Patsy Mink also joined Bernice Sandler and Edith Green and wrote the first draft of Title IX. Patsy Mink quickly became what I call the defender and uh, protector of Title IX. And any time anyone was trying to attack Title IX or weaken it, there was Patsy Mink. 
These women, Bernice Sandler, Edith Green, and Patsy Ming, all personally experienced discrimination in education. When interviewed, Bernice Sandler shares about her experience being denied a job she was qualified for. When I was re- wasn't even considered for a job, and the guy at the, at the University of Maryland said, you come on too strong for a woman, I went home and cried, and my then husband was good and said, are there strong men in the department? And I said, yes, and then he said, it's not you, it's sex discrimination. Birch Bayh, Senator of Indiana, was the first person to introduce Title IX to Congress as its chief Senate sponsor. Because many did not realize the impact which Title IX would make, assuming it would be of little significance, the bill was passed fairly easily, which is why it is referred to as the Stealth Bill. The long-term implications of Title IX were not felt by the American public until September of 1973. You've got this law signed in June of 72, and basically no one's paying attention. Your average people ignoring it. What is it? I don't know. Who's ever heard of it? And then in September of 1973, Billie Jean King plays Bobby Riggs. Billie Jean King was a well-celebrated tennis player who had won over 20 Wimbledon titles. She played against Bobby Riggs, who claimed that female tennis players were inferior, and stunned the American audience by beating Riggs 6-4 in the first match and 6-3 in the next two. This event proved that women were just as capable of playing professional sports as men, and proved to America that women deserved the opportunities that Title IX would give them. The effects of Title IX can be seen everywhere. Prior to the passing of Title IX in 1972, only 294,015 girls participated in high school sports. Today, 3.1 million girls are involved in high school sports and the number continues to increase. From the collegiate level, with 41% of athletes female, to the Olympic level, with world-renowned teams such as the USA Women's National Soccer Team, who have taken home four out of the last five gold medals. Women's presence in athletics is undeniable. A huge, huge difference in terms of the way that girls and women see each other as capable of competing on an equal field and winning. While Title IX is best known for its achievements on the field, its impact on education is arguably more impressive. Before Title IX was passed, 15.1% of women dropped out of high school, a full 1% higher than their male counterparts. By 2011, however, the tables had turned, with only 7% of women dropping out, while 9.1% of men dropped out. This shift is due to the massive changes that Title IX has brought about in America's perspective. Title IX, like all laws, does not come without unintended consequences. Under Title IX, all programs receiving federal financial assistance must produce the same number of male athletes as female athletes. This headcount policy can sometimes lead to the slashing of male teams in order to equal out the number of athletes. One unfortunate example of this was the slashing of the Cal State men's rugby team, who were national champions. We've ended up, uh, you know, demoted out of intercollegiate athletics uh, because of male headcount. Title IX also affects the number of scholarships given to male athletes. Men's gymnastics programs can have a max of 6.3 scholarships. Women can have 12. Women do four events, men do six events. How can any person look at that and say, yeah, that's fair? Title IX has made remarkable improvements in helping to close the gender gap in America. Work is still left to be done as women trail behind in subjects such as science, technology, engineering, and math. But without Title IX, it is possible that America's perception of a woman would still be gauged by her ability to cook, clean, and take care of her husband and children. Title IX initiated a new era, an era in which women are increasingly treated as equals. You ask young women in high school, and really in some of our college and university teams, uh, did Title IX help you? And you get a blank stare. What's Title IX? They don't think they're getting special treatment. And they aren't. They're being treated equally the way they should have been in the first place. Title IX made that possible. Yeah.